Welcome to Storytime. On uh, this episode, we're going to talk about the one arm judo boy. If you heard it, um, hopefully I do it justice. There's a ton of different versions of it. Um, if you haven't heard it before, well, you're welcome because it's a very good story. So our story begins with a boy that got into a car accident. And unfortunately, he lost his mother and father. And the boy lost his left arm. So now being disabled um, and also going through depression, he started getting bullied at school. And uh, his grandma, seeing his lack of confidence, decided I need to put him into some kind of sport or something because, you know, I, I just I hate seeing him like this. So they go around from dojo to dojo and nobody wants to work with him until they find one dojo where the sensei says, I will work with you. So the sensei starts working with the boy and, you know, a month passes, three month passes, and the boy is just doing his absolute best. He is putting in as much effort as he possibly can. Around six months pass, and he's only ever done one exercise. And the boy's starting to get concerned, and he's like, Sensei, all the other kids are learning all kinds of different things, and you've only ever taught me this, literally just this one move. When am I going to start learning new things? And the Sensei just says, believe in yourself. There's only one thing you need to learn, and that's it. Just one thing. So the boy is like, okay, I'll, you know, what else is he going to do? So he trusts his sensei and they continue training. Months pass by, nothing changes. He's still putting in as much effort as he possibly can. I, it's about a year now and the boy's only ever done one move. So the sensei comes in one morning and as the boy's kind of warming up, the sensei says, tomorrow you fight. And the boy's like, what do you mean I fight? And basically the sensei tells him, you're going to go into a tournament and you're fighting. And the boy's like, what? I'm not ready for a tournament. Now the boy's like stressed out. He's freaking out. So the next day comes, the tournament starts, and at the beginning of the first round, ding, boom, the boy slams the dude just like right into the mat. He's like, he, the boy's like freaking out. He's like, I, I, he doesn't know what to do. So second round comes, I'm sorry, not second round, the second fight, and again, Ding, boom, the boy slams the next kid right into the mat. And he's like, this, I don't understand what's going on. Like, do they, do they just feel pity for me because I don't have an arm? Like, I don't know. So now he's in the semifinal. Same thing happens again, except this time it's, you know, it takes a little bit longer because you're in the semifinals, right? You're getting more experienced people. And, uh, but yeah, again, boom, slams him right into the mat. Now the kid's literally in the final match of the tournament. And he's like, I don't even understand how I got here. Sensei, maybe we should, maybe we should quit. Uh, uh, and he sensei's no, just keep fighting. He said, okay, you know, and he goes into this final match. And this guy, this guy is literally twice the size of him. I mean, he, he is a monster. Like this dude is huge. And it's the final match, right? So it's not going to be anything easy. So the bell rings and then they start the match and the boy ends up just literally getting tossed around. He's just being beat up. And then boom, the bell rings, you know, they kind of time out. And he's talking to the sensei. And he's like, sensei, I'm getting beaten up. This guy is huge. I don't know what to do. You've only ever taught me one thing. I don't want to get hurt. Like, I think we should... I don't, I want to quit. So it says, no, believe in yourself. I taught you one thing and one thing is all you need to know. So the boy again, reluctantly trusts his sensei. And as they go back into the match, the bell rings. And now this huge dude, obviously winning the match is, you know, kind of, he, he drops his guard. And the moment he drops his guard, Boom! This boy throws him right into the ground and he wins the entire tournament. He he wins everything. So the boy's just literally sitting there like, what just happened? Did they, like, there's no way they would let me win this entire thing just because I, I have a disability. This literally makes no sense. So, after the match, on the car ride home, the boy musters up the courage to ask his sensei like, hey, what and before he could get the words out the sensei says there's two reasons you want the first reason is that move that i taught you is a move that's only learned 
by experts in judo, masters in the art of judo. The second reason you won is the only way to stop this move is by grabbing the left arm, the arm you don't have. So the moral of the story is whatever your weakness is might actually be your strongest asset. So whatever it is that you're doing and you just you feel like you're struggling at, keep pursuing it. Keep going after it. Don't stop. Don't quit. You never know what lies at the end of something and what you could perceive to be your weakest asset or your just your flaw or whatever it is you feel bad about yourself could actually be your greatest asset. It could be the thing that actually helps you win. So with that, guys, just please stay motivated. I hope this story has inspired you as much as it has inspired me because whatever you're dealing with, just remember, it could be your strongest asset. Thanks for listening to Storytime. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I guess I'll see you next time.